the total nickel production out of the United States will not even sustain a month of Tesla <laughs> car production. It's absolutely negligible. Hello, I'm Anson. 对于 Tesla 来说啊，虽然今年电池的供应是可以满足他们的目标交付量，但是大家有没有想过，明年也就是2023年呢？那如果老马这次没有放我们飞机的话， 2 0 2 3年将会是4680电池量产的关键年份。而4680电池是属于三元锂电池的一种，是配备了 NCM 8 1 1的应急材料。而这种电池规格是需要大量的镍金属。所以，按照这个逻辑去推的话，能拿到足够多的镍金属，将会是保证明年4680电池有足够产能的关键。今天我们会借着一段 Electrify 的主讲 Dylan Rumus 采访贵金属相关的业内人士的片段，来分析一下 Tesla 2023年以后的贵金属规划，还有 Tesla 之后到底有没有足够的镍去支持4680电池的量产。那事不宜迟，马上进入今天的影片。To your knowledge, does the United States have the resources? Like, do we have the nickel deposits, and it's just a permitting issue? We can't access it, or we don't even really have the resources to be a significant player. Right,、um, the United States is blessed. You do have you do have a very rare occurrence, sulfide. So sulfide is being because I said, remember, up to ten years ago, all the nickel came from sulfide, and sulfide they don't just happen everywhere. You have sulfide from Russia and、uh, Australia and China、uh, that account for most. Uh, United States do have nickel、uh, reserves. Again, it's in that、uh, Duluth complex in Minnesota. So you have Polymed that owns、uh, that's by own majority by Glencore, and then you have Entofagasta. So these these that area has a lot of nickel. I think、uh, I don't know about the reserve, but it certainly would be one of the major、uh, nickel sulfide district in the world. It will rank top ten in terms of reserve. It's a very famous district. Okay, good. That's question, good to know. The question then, the question then is, how can we, how can you guys move that? Of, of, I would say, if you were to discover a mine today, just to get through the feasibility technical, because you got to spend three to four years drilling, and that's going to cost something around thirty to forty million dollars. And then concurrently, you can start that permitting process. Going to take about three years. So just the technical studies and the permit is going to take you up to maybe seven years, five to seven years. And then construct a mine, especially in today's environment with COVID and access and supply chain issues. You're gonna take about three years. So you're looking at altogether a ten year window. Even if the Biden administration were to approve、uh, Polymet,、uh, which is next to、uh, Duluth, it's in Duluth. You're looking at maybe another three to five years before.、Um, <laughs> 右边那个就是这次被采访的业内人士 John Lee， 他披露了一个信息是非常关键的。其实美国在密歇根州是有很丰富的镍矿储存量的，因为这一点会直接影响到美国的通胀削减法案到底能起到什么样的一个效果。如果不清楚这个法案对电动车有什么影响的话，可以点右上角回顾之前的影片。但是正如 John 所说的，虽然美国是有丰富的镍矿储存量，但是如果想要把这些矿石从地底下挖出来的话，差不多会有一个十年的窗口期，这还已经是非常乐观的情况。所以这样看的话，基本上是远水解不了近渴。所以，想要拿到这七千五百美元的税务减免，也不是一件特别容易的事情。而且，就像刚刚也提到了“硫化镍”这个词，你可能会想说，镍还分这么多种类的吗？其实，在镍矿的一个领域里面，大概是会分为两种，一种叫硫化镍，也就是就像刚刚提到的这种，品质相对来说比较高；而另外一种是叫红土镍，开采出来的一个纯度还有质量就没有硫化镍这么好。所以，之前的贵金属供应商就在集中开采纯度比较高的硫化镍。这也让硫化镍在十年前一直都是镍矿市场的一个绝对主流，但是在最近几年，全球硫化镍的一个产量是在逐年下降，因为在经过了这么多年的一个长期开采之后，硫化镍的储存量还有矿石的品质都开始变差了，就相当于是把那些好的都已经拿走了，剩下来的质量肯定是越来越差。但是对于车用电池来说，只有硫化镍的纯度才能符合制造的标准，红土镍是不合格的，所以虽然在这之后的几年里面。大概率是用不到美国密歇根州这些镍矿了，但是通胀削减法案的实现也是十年，这对于之后美国本土电动车的三元锂电池供应来说也算是一个好消息吧。不过这两年，特斯拉其实已经和好几间贵金属供应商签订了关键金属的采购合约，那这些合约是不是能帮特斯拉提早预定这些车用电池的产能呢？我们来看看业内人士是怎么看待这件事情的。For Taylor, of course, is completely different. I don't believe the contract is binding. And that will be subject to a lot of contingencies,、uh, such as such as whether you can mine the, get the nickel out of the mine if you can the project permit it, etc.、Um, and I believe typically it's a very soft 
MOUs where Taylan will say, if I produce, I will give it to you. And then and the Tesla say, if I need nickel, I will buy from you. And but however, for for Tesla to be extending this gesture to uh Taylan, of which there's not a lot to gain for Tesla right now, because there's absolutely no certainty of where the nickel is going to be supplied, shows that uh Elon is willing to promote nickel and to sort of lend a hand to try to get the process through. Okay. Um, I would say, you know what, what Elon is doing is quite unusual because Elon usually would uh, hide a contract with say the battery providers, right? They would just say, look, I need this much battery, MNC A11, I need this back from LG or Panasonic. And, and whatever that they do is their business. So what Elon is doing is kind of like Apple when the speculators came into Kobo and, and and uh, you know, drove Kobo price tenfold from five dollar or fifteen dollars a pound to fifty dollars a pound in two months. So Apple kind of like Tim Cook is kind of like foresight, like Elon, and say, "Hey, I'm not going to rely on Panasonic to make sure that they can secure their supplies, because even if Panasonic were to force major their contract with with Tesla, still Tesla is going to suffer the consequence of the monetary damage that may not be able to be assessed because the batteries don't show up." They got big, big problems. So Tesla, in a way, is doing Panasonic a favor because te all Tesla is going to do is give that nickel to whoever they're, they're designated, whether it's Foxconn or whatever. It's kind of like Apple buying Cobalt to give to Foxconn to produce their Apple phones. So mm -hmm. it's a foresight. It's just to make sure that they're going down the supply chain to make sure that they're able to secure all the critical elements required to get that car out of the door. 这也是为什么我在之前就说很开心 Tesla 有这种远见的原因，因为很多投资人其实还没有意识到未来车企们对于贵金属的一个强度会有多么激烈。虽然他们的这个合约可能像 John 说的那样，对 Tesla 来说并没有太多的好处，但是提前和主要供应商们签订了长期协议，肯定是未雨绸缪的一个选择。而且 John 也表示了，马斯克其实并不是那种非常麻烦的客户，因为需要尽可能多的拿到镍矿的产量。所以在签订合约的时候， t e s l a 可能会给出一些更宽松的条款，供应商看到这些绝对会非常的开心。试问谁能拒绝一个没什么复杂要求，还能长期包办你大量产能的客户呢？而这种和供应商提前打好关系，并且签订合约的做法，会让 Tesla 在之后和传统车企的原材料竞争当中占据优势。其实4680电池主要影响的还不是 Model 3和 Model Y， 影响最大的应该是 Semi 和 Cybertruck 的产能。接下来我们会进行一系列的数学估算。来算出来 ，Tesla 二零二三年到底需要多少的镍矿石？所以，如果大家对数字不太感兴趣的话，可以选择跳到这个时间点继续观看。那我们现在就开始了。根据 Electric Vehicle Database 的资料，一辆 Cybertruck 的电池容量是二百五十千瓦时，而一辆三麦的电池容量是五百千瓦时。如果按照老马之前给出的一个指引 ，Tesla 将会在二零二三年开始量产 Cybertruck， 年产量预计在二十五万到三十万辆之间。三麦也会在二三年开始量产。然后在四年之后，也就是二零二七年，达到年产能十万辆的目标。那么我们就可以推算出来，想要满足这个产能目标的话，之后每年对于四六八零电池产能的需求会有多少？再参考高通国际推算出来的四六八零电池的材料用量，我们就能算出来，在二零二三年 ，Tesla 想要达成目标的话，至少是需要五十七万吨的镍。这里我们就先不理会其他的一个贵金属了，主要看镍矿的部分。但现在的问题是，在二零二一年。全球镍矿那个总产能也才二百七十万吨，而且我们刚刚也提到了，镍矿主要分为硫化镍和红土镍，只有硫化镍是符合标准可以生产车用电池的，而这两种的比例大概是百分之四十硫化镍，百分之六十红土镍这样。那么算下来，二一年的硫化镍产能也才一百零八万吨。那我们再把这两年镍矿的产量增长考虑进去，以每年增长百分之八的水平计算的话，那到了二零二三年，全球硫化镍的产能就是一百二十六万吨。Tesla 想要达成二三年四六八零电池的产能目标的话，就需要用掉全球百分之四十五的硫化镍产能。所以 Tesla 接下来的路真的是任重而道远。不过可能有人会说，那 Tesla 会不会直接买下来一两个镍矿的供应商呢？这不就可以确保接下来的镍金属供应了吗？关于这个问题，我们来看看 John 是怎么说的。Just a quick, like even just a one number answer, one last hypothetical. If Tesla were to buy a mine. What would be the initial capex to get something like that up and running? Are we talking five hundred million? Are we talking three billion? What would it look like?、Uh, depending on the production throughput, 
you know, I can give you some some concrete numbers. If you're looking at say uh, a mine that produces around minimum twenty million pounds a year, which is which is a medium to small uh, production scale, a mine that can supply on an annual basis of what Tesla need, a quarter of Tesla's need will cost you about a billion dollars. Really, if Tesla want to buy a mine of size of which that will supply a million Tesla production, a million, you're going to need $5 billion uh, minimum uh, Dylan, to, to get you, to get you, uh, to get you a million Tesla. Uh, okay. Had required. However, you might want to cut that number by half. If half would be like, for example, like, you know, you talk about the variance on the LFP, which would require no, no nickel. So, so then maybe you're looking at 50, so maybe two and a half, two and a half, billion dollars or three billion dollars that uh elon's gonna need to build a mine to supply all his um uh, nickel need today got it now john i know you're somewhat of an m a expert in the nickel space so my question for you is do you foresee tesla buying whether it be mining company refining company and maybe more importantly would that even benefit tesla or they just need to keep supplying and not really take that next leap if I'm Elon, that will probably be my last resort. Nickel sulfide is in Russia, China, Australia, and Canada. Only those four countries. There, there are less than 30 nickel mining companies in, in, that are listed on the common stock exchange. And if you look at, I would go on and say there are maybe less than 10 or 15 good qualified mining projects in jurisdiction sulfide. That's, that's not in Russia and China. So if, if, if Elon were to buy a mine, I think that's going to triple the price of all the other mines that are still out in the market. And secondly, it says that Elon didn't have to recruit all those uh, talents to run a project. So most likely, I think Elon is going to continue to, to uh, try to secure additional supply from Glencore, from BHP. And uh, these are the, the, you know, there's three or four. Um, uh, they might, I mean, Elon might, buy a, a, a nickel prim, primary nickel mining producer like Sherrod, for example. But Sherrod has a lot of production in Cuba, which again, it would be pro problematic. So it's really in a bind. I think Elon has done as much as he could. I, I, can't, I cannot see Elon go on a limb and buy a nickel producer, but Elon might invest. That's another possibility is like he did with Twitter to invest in a company like Glencore or BHP so that he could have some influence on Securing the uptake. I actually very strongly believe that Tesla could directly invest in some nickel mining companies to have the ability to buy nickel from Tesla. This would be more expensive than buying from other companies. It would be a waste 未来几年，像是镍矿这种贵金属将会非常的抢手。谁能提前和供应商签订合约，谁就能确保自己不会陷入可怕的产能地狱。特斯拉想要达成自己设定的产能目标，就必须更积极的在贵金属上面进行布局。虽然会很困难，但是我相信老马是可以解决这些问题的。那这就是今天所有的内容了。而 Telegram 那个频道主要会不定时的放一些数据和重要事件。如果想要了解美股市场更深入的分析，可以订阅我的 Patreon 或者 YouTube 会员。像是关于车用电池贵金属的详细分析，我之前就已经在会员区的一个文章里面分享过了。订阅和进群的链接都在简介栏。那么最后不要忘了点赞、留言、加订阅。我们下期音频再见了，拜。